FMI students, it's us again, Mira and Carrie from Red Cedar Chamber Music. We got a lot of questions uh, from you via Pear Deck and we're going to answer some of them. We know that in the classroom, for, with some classes, we were able to answer a few questions uh, at the end of class, but, but most classes we weren't able to. So we have great questions here and we're going to try and answer them. So Mira, how old are you? I'm 48. How old are you? I'm 53. And so how old were you when you started playing the cello? So I started playing later than a lot of people. I was, um, I was 13 when I started to play. So I've been playing for 40 years. What about you? I was seven when I started playing the violin. And I've been, I'm 48, so I've been playing for 41 years. Jeez. So wait, have, have you been, I've been playing longer than You've you? You've been playing longer than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, what else did students want to know? Oh, how long have we been playing together? So one thing that we, we should make sure that you understand is that we're a married couple and we've been married for, for 18 years and we have two children ages 18 and 16 and we also have two cats who are roaming around here so if the camera suddenly topples over you'll know why. Yeah, our cats are Serena and Frankie. <laughs> Frankie looked at us. <laughs> oh, he heard his name. And Serena's, yeah, okay. So anyway. Uh, Why is your name Red Cedar Chamber Music? Well, Red Cedar is actually the, the, the original name of the Cedar River that runs through Cedar Rapids. And the Red Cedar River was named the Red Cedar River because of the red cedar trees that lined it. So when the founding directors of Red Cedar Chamber Music founded Red Cedar in Marion, Iowa, um, they were looking for a name that represented the, the area and, and came up with Red Cedar. Okay, someone wanted to know how old are our instruments? Oh, that's a great question. How old's your violin? My violin, I'll tell you when it was made and I'll let you do the math. All right. It was made in 1735. <laughs> so that is uh, pretty close to 300 years old. Yeah, almost 300 years old. It's an antique. Like piece 287. Of... Yeah. yeah, so, and I actually, I actually play two cellos. Um, and one of them is a real baby. It's only a hundred years old. It was made in 1922. That seems crazy, a hundred years old. My other instrument, the maker, we don't know exactly how old it is, but the maker died in 1622. So it's at least 400 years old. So next year in 2022, one of my instruments is going to turn 400 and the other is going to turn 100. But, you know, it's really important to know that, that, that there are a lot of instruments and there are people making instruments today that are really great instruments. So an instrument doesn't have to be old to be, um, to be really good. And also, it doesn't have to be old to be... Uh, to, it doesn't, it, just because it's old doesn't mean it's always really super valuable. Okay, next question. Where is the studio where you perform? So we're in, we are, didn't we already answer this one? Well, let's answer it again if we, if we did. Okay. Um, no, I don't think we did. We're, we're in, this studio right here is our home in Iowa City. And we're actually in the same room. This is our living room. We were sitting in a different place when we, when we visited your classroom last week. But, um, this, uh, th this house, we have lived in an old Victorian house in, in downtown Iowa City, and it has become the home office and the home base for Red Cedar Chamber Music. Um, we travel around playing a lot of different places, but ever since the pandemic started, we've been performing from here for, for a virtual audience. And someone asks, do you get nervous when you perform in front of people? Well, sometimes I get nervous when I perform in front of people. Um, I actually also conduct, and 
it's really more likely that I will get nervous when I'm conducting an orchestra or before I conduct an orchestra than when I play the cello. Um, and I'm not sure why that is. And it never used to happen to me when I was younger, but for about the last 10 years, I've started to get a little nervous. In fact, I was a little nervous um, for a couple of our classes last week. Um, but being a professional musician, you just learn to deal with that a little bit when, when it happens. Yeah, I occasionally get nervous now, but I will say when I was younger and I was more concerned about messing up, I got more nervous. Now that I'm older, I'm more excited about sharing music with people and feeling that they're there to share it with me rather than to judge me or criticize me. So I get a lot less nervous now that I'm older. So we got another question. How many videos do you have posted to YouTube? Um, Red Cedar Chamber Music began posting their concert videos uh, on YouTube in 2014. So just less than 10 years ago. And we have over 200 videos on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Red Cedar Chamber Music, all one word. And you can look it up um, and see almost everything we've done in the last 10 years. Okay, and one last question, Carrie. Do you like the <laughs> drums? <laughs> I do like the drums. I love the drums, in fact, and I love coming to your classroom and seeing all the drums that you guys have to play. I can think you're really lucky, and here's one of my drums that I like to play, and I'll demonstrate a little tumbao, which is a basic pattern for drumming along with Latin beats. That's so cool. So another question that we uh, had was what, that were that you asked was was is all the music that you play from the 1800s? And actually, you know, this is a perfect example of world music, music from all around the world that is maybe folk music and has become part of our musical culture. I don't think that people should think of classical music as one thing. I think people should think of classical music as, as music in all styles. And there's a tremendous amount of music that has been around for, for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And lots of times what we call that is folk music. For instance, Irish fiddling or bluegrass or just music from around the world. What you just heard on the, on the drum was folk music. And so we're going to play some music for you tonight. And, um, and some of it will be folk music. And we're going to have to change our setup a little bit. But we'll be right back with you to play. All right. Well, we're back. And we promised you some more music. So we're going to play. We're going to begin with some folk music. Now, folk music is music that is passed down from generation to generation just by singing. It's often not written down and, um, and often is songs that you might really know, like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or other things you might have heard many times but you don't know the name of. So over the years, classical composers have had a real fascination with folk music and often they've made a special effort to go and experience folk music of different cultures, to go find it in the countryside where only a small group of people sings this music. So one of those men was a composer from Hungary named Bela Bartok. And he and his friends, when the very first recording instrument was developed, it was a, a device which allowed you to record music on a wax cylinder. He and his friends traveled all over Europe, going out into the countryside and collecting folk music. He also traveled to the Middle East. So we're going to begin with a, uh, an Arabian song that Bela Bartok collected over a hundred years ago and um, set as a duo. <laughs> Thank you. 
and next we will play another one of these songs or pieces that Bartok collected, and this is a Transylvanian dance. something really different and in America there's a lot of music from the eastern part of the country in Appalachia that is folk music bluegrass came out of it but there are a lot of old um, uh, wonderful folk songs and many of them were brought over from England and Ireland to this country and then became American folk music uh, this is one that is really famous in America, but it's actually an Irish traditional song, and it's called The Star of the County Down. And one thing you can listen for and watch for in this is at the beginning of the piece, Carrie has the melody, and I have the accompaniment, and not only do I have the accompaniment, but I'm doing pizzicato. Thank you. 
Okay, so we promised you that we would play for you Michael Kimber's Tarantella again. But first we have to tell you a little more about what a tarantella is. So I think the first thing to say is that the folk music that you just heard was hundreds and hundreds of years old. And actually the tarantella as a dance was developed in actually in the 1500s in Italy. There was this um, condition that people had sometimes and they, they, you might know somebody like this. These people, <clears throat> the condition was people would compulsively dance. In other words, they would never stop dancing. They would just dance all the time. Wouldn't matter if they were in church. It wouldn't matter if they were in a public square. It wouldn't matter, you know, almost anything. Sitting at a dinner table, get up and start to dance. And pretty strange, but people believed that this condition was caused by the bite of a spider. Hence the name tarantella. You know the word tarantula, right? This is the dance caused by the spider. So when people would get this condition, having feared that they had been bitten by a spider and that the poison was in their veins, everyone would gather around and people would play music and these these, the, the poor victim would have to dance and dance spinning and spinning and spinning and dance and dance and dance and the music would go faster and faster and faster until they were sweating and all of the poison was sweated out of their poise, pores and then they would just collapse on the ground in a heap and then they would be cured. So the tarantella, this kind of spinning dance, has been part of our folk music tradition and part of our classical music tradition ever since then, about 600 years. So Michael Kimber wrote this, this Tarantella for the two of us with you in mind because he thought you would enjoy the story of how the dance of the Tarantella came about. you'll see later in the week and we can't we can't wait to share that with you thanks a lot